All right, so the stream starts with the infinite streams. <laughs> I always have to check that Twitch is working. Um, welcome everybody who is joining us today. Uh, I hope that you are well. Um, as usual, if anybody has any weird sounds or echoes or anything like that, please do let me know in the chat. Um, it's very difficult for me to pick these things up. Uh, because of how the way because of the way obs and all that works so if you um have any weird sound artifacts or you can't hear the background music or you can't hear me talk then please do let me know um i'm gonna hop off camera quickly and do something because i need to pour something All right. Um, I usually get myself a nice big pot of coffee before these streams. This is what my coffee pot looks like. <laughs> um, and then I logged onto my computer. Uh, I do the streams from my MacBook. I work on an, on a, an Ubuntu desktop, and then I do my video recording and streams and all that from, from my work MacBook. And all kinds of weird fun, fun things went wrong, and I had to reset things and reinstall things. So I never got around to finishing making my coffee. So I had to rush off quickly and do that. So I apologize. Um, thank you, Stephen, for confirming that all is fine with the audio. I appreciate that. Uh, Chris! <laughs> oh dear, Chris is here. <laughs> um, so for those of you who don't know, Chris is a friend of mine from Cape Town. Uh, Chris is a fellow developer um, and speaker and streamer and coder and gamer and all those fun things um and so it's always a pleasant surprise when a when a friend from around my neck of the woods joins one of my streams um it also adds a nice little extra level of stress and pressure because <laughs> it's somebody you know but welcome chris good to have you with us man um all right um let's dive in so the last time i did this we were building an ubuntu server for wordpress using apache uh thanks chris um, and if you missed that live stream, this is the one over here. We had all kinds of fun and games in that live stream. Um, oh, for crying out loud. Command V in OBS doesn't work for some reason. Anyway, um, and I have to just share this with you all. So I didn't create any, for those of you who are here for this, this uh, Apache session, you'll remember that I had some frustrations installing some things because I hadn't set up the VPS with enough memory. Um, and I uploaded the recording to YouTube, and I, I really appreciate the fact that um, YouTube auto-chaptered the video. Um, I didn't do this chaptering, this is YouTube's chaptering, but it has introduction, overview, digital ocean, resources, terminal, logging in, creating a user, disabling root access, logging out as user, installing MySQL, troubleshooting, and then frustration. <laughs> and it's about 10 minutes of frustration. So YouTube was able to determine that I was annoyed <laughs> in that video. I just thought that was really funny um, when I saw that. But uh, yes, we managed to set up uh, WordPress on, sorry, something just got loud there. We managed to set up WordPress on an Apache Ubuntu server or an Ubuntu Apache server, if you will. This week, it's all about Nginx. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to mention is that in the comments for this, this meetup, um, somebody shared, I think it was Mark, perhaps. I'm not sure. Let me just see here. Um, see more comments. Uh, it was Roger. Roger said that my experience with Nginx is that it is so much better than Apache for WordPress. I've run it using its built-in caching along with Redis object cache, and I've yet to see anything match the performance on a VPS. And Roger is pretty correct on that score. Um, if you're building a, your own VPS and you want the fastest option, then Nginx is definitely the fastest option. Um, there is a... I'm going to find this very quickly. I think it was on SpinUp WP. Um, SpinUp WP did a, a uh, review. Um, it's under caching and performance. Let me see if I can find it. Um... I'm not going to find it now, am I? 
Oh yes, they did one on Varnish versus Nginx Fast CGI. Um, and essentially Nginx is about the fastest you can get. Um, Nginx is, is better for, for caching static items. Um, and then if you enable uh, various other things, you can get pretty much the fastest sort of WordPress site you can get. The reason I still like using Apache personally is just because Apache is a little bit more configurable. Um, by default, Apache supports HD access files in the root of the WordPress directory. So it gives gives you a little bit of more configurability. Um, if you want to enable server level things on Nginx, you need to be able to go into the Nginx configs and make changes there, um, which depending on your needs might be the way you want to go about doing things. Um, I was very, I would say nervous, but I didn't get into Nginx for a while because I was just so comfortable with Apache. And then as I got into Nginx, I discovered that the Nginx configs are very similar to Apache in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes it just takes a little bit of research looking for the Nginx version of the Apache config um, and then implementing that. Um, it just means if you want to run like a shared hosting environment and you want to give your users the ability to make changes using HD access files, you can't do that by default. Um, there are ways to run um, like nginx on the server and then support hd access files on the front end i can't remember what the correct term is i think it's called like reverse something or other um but that's not something i'm going to be able to dive into the, it's a whole different topic uh, but if you're just doing it for yourself or your business or whatever and you just need one server for one wordpress site then nginx is pretty much the fastest um out of the box there might be faster options uh, we might be looking into one of them in a later stream but for now between apache and nginx nginx is the faster of the two um so the resources that i wanted to share before we get started as i mentioned in the last stream i generally refer to digital ocean for any kind of server related um, tutorials so i'm going to share that link in the chat um, this is the linux nginx mysql php um, article um and this is basically just installing all the core software. You will notice in the prerequisites, they also mention about the initial server setup, which is so a good tutorial to go through. I'll copy that into the chat as well. This is basically setting up your you know, SSH access and creating your first users and, and all those kinds of things. So logging in as root, um, creating users, granting privileges, all that kind of stuff, firewalls and all of that. Um, so usually you can get away with those two articles um, for setting up your base server. However, and I mentioned this last time, um, the folks at Spin Up WP have also created um, a install WordPress on Ubuntu set of tutorials. Now, one of the things that I like about this set of tutorials is it's specifically aimed at WordPress. So the folks at Spin Up WP they run a managed WordPress hosting service. It's not managed WordPress. It's managed manage vps so essentially everything we're going to do manually today they have a service that they run for you um, and i'm not trying to promote them i just used to work there before i joined automatic uh, and so i know this this set of articles exists um it's probably the most comprehensive uh, series of of or guide at least if you will for setting up wordpress on nginx on, on ubuntu um, so i highly recommend keeping this bookmarked uh, let me let me grab that and Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the first chapter because the link to get to the actual thing is, doesn't work the way I expected to. So I'll grab the first chapter and I'll share that in the chat as well. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to mostly be following this series of tutorials. Um, uh, there might be some things that I choose to skip today because of, just because of time. I'm going to focus on the core pieces of the server setup. Um, but I'm kind of going to take us from zero to, to WordPress install. And hopefully if there's time um multi-site sorry just to move that out of the way um and then we should be good to go so i have i have set aside two hours for this so we've got from now until 5 p.m my time i'm gonna pour my coffee so i've got something to keep me going um and then we can dive straight in oh i just spilled coffee on my desk pad how oh, frustratingly annoying <laughs> this is live streams folks anything can and will happen <laughs> all right um there's one other thing I forgot to do. One second. Not going to lie, this is one of the things that I love about the live stream format. If I get up and walk away for a second, nobody complains. <laughs> if it's an online workshop, I feel the need to be a little bit more formal, if you will. Um, and this is just me chatting to 
a computer. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Um, all right. So you'll notice that um, this guide has Ubuntu 2404. Um, I'm specifically not working with 2404. I'm working with 2204. Um, just because that's currently the, you know, most stable LTS version. Um, Ubuntu released 2404 in April of this year, hence the numbering. Um, but 2404.1 is probably not released yet. Um, and I generally don't... Oh, it looks like it was just released. Interesting. Uh, let me see here. It looks like I just missed the release date. Uh, 2404, 2404, 2404. No, it hasn't been released. I'm talking nonsense. It hasn't been released yet. So I usually rec only recommend that one installs the point release of an LTS because often the new LTS has some issues and some bugs that are being figured out. Um, so generally, most, to the best of my knowledge, most hosting companies do the same thing. They don't install the brand new LTS as soon as it comes out. They wait a while because it's generally in about, if you look at this, 2204 was, was released in April and then usually about, was it May, June, July, August, about four months later, they released the first point release. And that's usually the more stable version. So for that reason, I've stuck to 2204 because it's currently uh, like the most stable LTS version. So that's what I've installed on the machine. Um, I might need to log into my DigitalOcean account now. Um, that's the other reason I use DigitalOcean tutorials because I have a DigitalOcean account that I use for these things. Um, so I'm going to log in there quickly and I hope that I can... Ah, I need to enter my password off screen. <laughs> uh, let me do that quickly. Uh, the joy about password managers is that means you can live stream and not share your password with people. <laughs> uh, and I can't it without looking at the screen the keyboard so i have to do, look at the keyboard all right let's do this um so no man come now uh. let's go come on run password do your thing nope didn't like that one let's try it again uh, 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 uh. That didn't work. Check your password and try again. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Chris says, my favorite pastime is resetting secrets because I'm too bad at streaming not to make. <laughs> that's why I use one password for, for logins. Um, and then I, I share the root password while we're streaming and then I kill the server afterwards. <laughs> uh, I think I actually, oh, there we go, we're in. Um, so it's that one. Uh, no, come on now. Uh, that one. So I'm using a domain, psychotech. Oh, now it's going to send an email to that domain. So now I'm going to have to open up that email off screen. I did all of this on my desktop earlier just to make sure everything is set up. And then because of the fun and games with my laptop freaking out, I didn't get time to do all of this on the laptop. So now I have to go through all these manual steps that I wanted to have done before we got here. Anyway. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so... I have this domain, psychotech.ca.za, that I use for all these sort of tests and things. Um, and that's what we're going to be using for today's stream. And I have the server pointing to that um, domain. So once I can get logged in here, um, I should have hit trust, shouldn't I? Anyway, um, here is my set of projects. So I did also mention this in last week's stream. I don't, you know, personally say you must use DigitalOcean. Um, it's just who I use. They've just, I've, I've used them since they originally launched back in whenever it was, and I find them to be the easiest to use. You can use Amazon ECS, you can, EC2, um, Microsoft Azure, whatever VPS you're, you're happy with, you can use. You just need to set up a server, um, a virtual server. And what I discovered last week is make sure that server has at least one gig of RAM. Um, last week in the, not last week, last time when I streamed, when I was trying to set up the MySQL server, we ran into some issues and that was because of the RAM. There wasn't enough RAM on the machine. So make sure you've got a at least a one gig. So there's my one gig memory. It's got a 25 gig hard disk. It's got like one virtual CPU or something. There's the IP address, the public IP address. So I'm going to just ping that and make sure that that is a valid um, IP. So let's go ping. Um, there we go. We're getting some response. So that's great. And then I've already set up the DNS to point uh, the Psychotech domain to that 
uh, IP address. So there we go, 46101129193, 46101129193. Um, so that you will do however your DNS gets set up, be it Cloudflare or if you're you know using a DNS service of any kind, you need to point your DNS to, to the server. All right, so let's get started. Um, so the first prerequisite that the folks in this guide talk about is getting some kind of domain name. It just makes it easier to have it uh, connected to a domain as, as opposed to using the IP or the address all the time. Also makes it easier to remember. Um, so that's a recommendation. Then they recommend DigitalOcean um, and they have all their docs and you can set it up. Um, there's all the steps there. Spinup recommends at least two gigs of memory. For our purposes, I'm going with one. Um, two gigs is recommended if you're, you know, powering high-end sites. I've I've always got away with my personal sites at a one gig of memory server uh, because I don't have like high traffic sites. Um, then uh, set up the password option. We'll talk about root access in a second. Um, and then you can add all these other things if you want, but they take you through the steps and through the process. And then we log into the server. Um, so I'm going to off screen, I'm going to copy out the root password for the server and I'm going to log in. So in my terminal, I'm going to SSH in root at, and I can just go psychotech.coza. I could use the IP address as well if I wanted to. And it tells me that there's an error. And this is because I was previously using this domain for another IP address. So I can just remove line 43 from my known hosts. Um, and there is a single command you can run to do that. Um, and I'm going to just Google that quickly. Um, quickly remove line from known hosts. Uh, it's like a said, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'm actually just going to log into it. Uh, no, not that one. And this you probably won't have an issue with if you've never um, SSH into servers like this before. This is just because I've done this uh, password again. Um, it's the one downside of reusing domain names and reusing servers. So I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom here and find Psychotech. There it is, nice and quick and easy. And I'm going to just uh, control K to cut that and control X to exit out of there and say yes and update my known hosts. So now I should be able to log in again. Um, so root at psychotech.coza SSH, there we go. Um, there we go. And it's asking me about fingerprints and um, am I happy with this? I know the server is, is my server, so I'm happy to log in. So I will just go ahead and say yes. And then what's that's going to do? It's going to add that key um, to my list of known hosts. So it's basically recreating the record we just deleted. And then I need my root password. So let's copy that out. Um, and we log in and there's the server we're logged in how boring text on a white screen <laughs> um, but as you can see it's running 220404 which is great that's what we want um, it's using six percent of its 24 gigs of hard drive space it's using 21 percent of the memory so that shows you even a server is, is using 21 so what is that 200 megs of a one gig uh, server space memory space um, and then there's some updates that can be done. So this was also something I didn't do last week. The first thing I didn't do was update my server. So always update your server the first time you have it set up. It's weird to me that, and I guess it's just the way it works. When, when DigitalOcean, when you install the server, it's obviously just using an image of the server install software. Um, and then there's always going to be some updates that will have happened since, since the last release. Um, so the first thing is to use sudo and run apt update. If you don't know what sudo is, basically it's a way of running things as a root uh, without switching to the root user, which is always recommended. Sudo also adds some protections around doing things that you shouldn't be able to do. So it warns you if you're trying to do things that you shouldn't be able to do. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that now because I'm logged in as root, so it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> so I can just run upgrade. Um, I could have just run update previously. Uh, so I'll just run upgrade now. Um, and I want to, yes, continue with all of that. Uh, so the pseudo wasn't needed and, and, and I'm, I'm being daft. <laughs> all right, so that'll make sure that I've got my latest and greatest and all the software on the server. Um, and while that's doing its thing, I'm going to start reading through what we need to do next. So it's going to ask for the password. Yes. Um, then they recommend setting a host name. Um, this is useful if you um, have a you know domain name pointing to your server. 
Um, it makes connecting to the server much easier in the future as you don't have to remember IP addresses and all of that. So I'm going to um, set up the host name. So I'm going to copy that line. Um, okay, this is telling me there's a new kernel. Do I want the kernel? Uh, restarting the system to load the new kernel will not be handled automatically, so you should consider rebooting. All right, well, let's do that. This is not something you'll always see happen, but uh, sometimes there can be an upgraded kernel. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to say, yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using tab just to jump between those options as things are being installed. Um, and it did say it did recommend restarting the service. I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to go shut down minus R now. What that does is that reboots the server and I'm going to have to SSH in again. So while we're doing that, um, let me copy this line. So I'm going to copy that. I like to keep my um, my DigitalOcean window open because if I do need to reboot the server, or whatever the case may be, it'll actually show me the status. Um, let's have a look here. Let's have a look at power. Okay, that's we can turn off power cycle. Let's have a look at the graphs. Uh, Okay, it looks like it's up and running again, so we should be able to log in. VPSs are really quick to, to connect. Uh, so I'm going to hit Control R, and then I can go through my SSH history, my terminal history, sorry. Um, and there it is, so it's root at. Here we go. Okay, it's asking me for the password. Um, so let's copy that out. And put that in. Cool, there we go. So we're up and running. So then let us go and grab this command to set the host name uh, and I'm just going to paste that in and I'm just going to change this to uh, da, 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 PSYKRO. There we go. So I'm just setting the host name to the same name as the domain um, and that's all good. All right. Then it talks about you know all kinds of other things. I'm not going to worry too much about those. It talks about setting the time zone. I'm not going to worry about that now. It's unimportant to me. Um, then it then it talks about the server upgrades. Um, so it also recommends using dist upgrade instead of upgrade because it will intellig intelligently handle dependencies. Again, that's down to personal preference. Um, and then you can auto remove outdated packages. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that now. Um, and there we go. Then there's a section on automatic security updates. Now, this is something that somebody asked me about in the last live stream. I'm not going to run this now. I'm not going to set this up, but this is a very good idea to do. So basically, if there are any security up updates that come out, if there's anything that is discovered that will make your server insecure, setting up the unattended upgrades package will ensure that all of your uh, security so uh, updates are installed. So I do recommend doing that if you're if you're doing this on a, an important server, like a production server or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm not going to worry about that now, but these instructions will take you through all of it. Um, then the, the next good thing to do is to create a new user on the server. So the reason for this is that you don't really want to leave your root user account enabled. You really want to actually shut that down. Um, and so to do that, you create a new user. You can call it your administrator user, whatever you want to call it. And then you add that user to the pseudo group. So the user can execute root uh, commands, but without actually being the root user. Um, so the first step is to add the user. So I'm just going to go add user. Um, and I'm going to just clear to clear my screen. Uh, so I'm just going to go add user and I'm going to go Jonathan. You can, you know, make it your name or admin or whatever you prefer. Um, it asks a bunch of questions. It's going to ask me for a new password for Jonathan. So I'm just going to type in a password that I'll remember for now. Um, here we go. It's going to ask me for the password again. Right. And then it asks you for details about the user themselves. So I'll just pop in my name. I don't have a room number. <laughs> I'm not going to put in my work phone or home phone or anything else. Um, and there we go. So all that information is logically irrelevant except for your name. So we've created the user. Then we need to add the user to the pseudo group. So to this command over here, user mod. Um, so let's go user mod ag pseudo uh, Jonathan. There we go. That's been done. Um, and now it says it recommends to ensure your account is working, logging out of your current SSH session and initializing the new one. So log out and then log in as that user. 
So let's test that out. Um, so let's exit out of here. Okay, we're quit out of that. So now let's go SSH Jonathan at psychotech.ca.za. Um, it's going to ask me now for my password that I just set up. So let's pop that in. And there we go. So now we're logged in as the Jonathan user. You can see it says Jonathan at Psychotech here. So now if I was to run something like apt update, it would say I don't have permission to do that. So I have to run all my commands that I need to run as a root with the word sudo in front of it. Um, so that's one little interesting thing about setting that up. Then it talks about generating a key pair. Um, this is the best way to connect to your server using your local key pair. Um, you basically create your key pair, you set up your SSH key, you then um, copy your public key to your server, um, and you create a place for it on the server. So you go back into the server and set it up, set up the SSH directory, uh, and then within the directory, you create authorized files. And then you go back to your computer and you cat the um, the local public key and then you paste it into your server. So to make this a little bit easier to follow, um, I've already done the public private key bit. So I've already done that over here. Um, uh, so this line I've already done, I've already got my, my, my public and private key on my, on my machine. So I'm gonna jump straight ahead to copying it over to the server. So what I'm gonna do to make that a little bit easier is I'm going to side by side to terminal windows. Um, so we'll pop this one over here. And I know there are ways that you can run multiple tabs and things within things. I just have it as a plain terminal. So I'm going to exit on the left here. And now I'm on my MacBook on the left. And on the right, I'm going to SSH into the server um, with my password. And there I'm in the server. So that's how I'm going to remember which is which. I find this easier to, to sort of remember which is which. Obviously, if you look at the terminal heading, terminal title tag, title bar, sorry, it's got the server name and all of that. So that makes it easy to remember. And this is this is locally on my machine. Um, okay, so the first step I need to do is I need to set up these things on the server. So I need to make that folder on the server. And this is inside of this, no, not that command, sorry. I didn't copy that properly. Let's go back and do it this way. Let's just copy these two. Um, so I don't need both commands, but this is inside the home directory of this user. So I'm gonna make the uh, .ssh folder, and then I'm going to run the chmod command to change, I think it's permissions. permissions to that of that um, directory. So I'm gonna run that. And then I wanna create the new authorized keys file. So I'm gonna copy that. Now there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could use touch. That's another Linux command. Um, this, this instruction just has you using nano, which is a text editor. So basically it'll create the file and then open it. So now it's an empty file. So I can just press control X and now I should be able to see it. So let's just go CD SSH. Uh, no, it didn't create the authorized keys. That's actually a bug in the. Oh, they're leaving it open. And then we're okay. Sorry. Let me go back one step. Okay. So they're, what they're suggesting is run the nano bit and then leave it open there. And then on this side over here, um, run your command to copy your public key from your local machine. Um, now I'm not going to do this on screen, <laughs> but this is the command to run. Um, so, actually, don't think it matters if I do it on screen because I don't think anybody can do anything with my public key. Um, but I can't remember. Maybe I'm being silly. I don't know, but I think it should be fine. Uh, let's do a quick Google search. Is it safe to share your public? I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, it's safe to share. Yes. Okay, yeah, so it's fine. Nobody can do anything with it. <laughs> um, so I run this command. So this cat command will basically um, output it onto the screen. 
the public key contents and then PB copy will copy it to the clipboard. So I'm going to run that and it's done that. Oh, it actually doesn't even show it. That's fine. Um, and then I'm going to paste it into my authorized keys file. Uh, so I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to go paste. So there it is. Um, and that's now sitting in the authorized keys file. So I can save that. Yes, let's save that. Okay, so that's done. Um, and now we can go back to the instructions. Okay. And then it says paste your public key, control X and then Y to save it. And then finally set the correct permissions on the file. So we need to set those permissions here. So let's run that. Right, so now the permissions are set. Um, now if you log in, you should no longer have to enter your password. Um, if you set a password when correcting the key, you will need to enter it when prompted. So now if I exit out of here um, and I run SSH Jonathan at Psychotech, it might still ask me for my password once to unlock the power of written public key. But if it doesn't, then it should just log me straight into the server because I've probably unlocked the key somewhere else. I think it's in my Mac keychain, so it unlocks when I, when I log into the machine. But now it means I don't have to use my password every time. So that's a good first step to start off with there. Um, okay, so that's setting up the user. Then it's recommended that you disable root login. Um, so you basically disable SSH access for the root user. Um, and then you also uh, disable password authentication so that people have to log in with an SSH key. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making sure that only this computer with this public and private key pair can log into that server. And this is a very good thing to do. So I'm going to do those very quickly now. So let's copy this one out. Um, there we go. And now it's going to ask me for the password on the server, which I expect. Okay, and then I need to look for emit root login. Now in Nano, you can use the control W keyboard combination to search, and then you can just paste your text in there, permit root login, and there it is. And I think I need to change that to no, yes, no. Um, okay, so let's go and do that. So change that to no. I think that's what I need to do inside of that. So yes, I want to save. Uh, yep. And then I need to restart the SSH service. Um, so let's do that. Okay, that's the service restarted. Then I need to... Now, it says yeah, if you exit the current session, try reconnecting, you should receive a permission denied error. The final steps, I'm just going to jump right ahead to disabling user login. Um, so I'm going to copy that out and paste that there. Ideally, if this is the first time you're doing it, I do recommend testing all these steps. Um, but I've done this a few times before, so I feel fairly comfortable to just go ahead. Um, password authentication. And now what we do is we remove the hash because that's commented out. And we say password authentication, no. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. All right, so we can exit out of that and say hit Y to save it and enter to write it to that file. And then we restart the server again. Um, now, normally I just do both of these at the same time and then I just restart the server once. But it's, it's not a bad idea to try it again and again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first try in my MacBook. And this is another reason why I like to have the two terminals side by side. I'm first going to try and log into the server as root. Uh, root at psychotech.coza. And it should deny me. Uh, it's asking for a password. But it should still deny me even though I um, enter the password. Permission denied. Excellent. Um, and then I want to come over here. Then I want to actually try and log in as the root user and just make sure that I can still log in. Not the root user, sorry, my user, and make sure I can still log in. Uh, so I'm going to go SSH Jonathan at psychotech.co.za. And you'll notice I'm leaving this window open here. And that's, that's there's a good reason for that. Because if this all went wrong, um, I've got nowhere back in the server. So I like to just leave one logged in instance. Cool. I'm in. I'm happy days. Okay, so that's all go works well. Um, and 
it asks if you should there's this the steps to follow if you're still having problems that's fine okay so we've got all of that so now only i can uh, log into this machine with my public and private key root users can't log in so we're good to go all right i'm going to exit out of one of these uh, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the instructions side by side so we don't have to keep jumping back and forth um, the next step they talk about is configuring uncomplicated firewall so you do want to have a firewall on your server you basically only want to allow traffic especially if it's a wordpress server um, you only want to allow your http and https traffic maybe ftp later on but maybe not and then ideally your ssh access you want to allow but everything else you want to shut down um, so un uncomplicated firewall is a great way to do that on an ubuntu server so it's just one command that we run um, and then we just use these commands to allow the different uh, server types um, I don't know who posted this, but no, I don't want to see her naked. <laughs> I don't know if everybody else can see that. Um, but uh, no, that's that's kind of not what we're about here, folks. <laughs> um, you have been... Where's the... Okay, looks like whoever that was didn't hang around. Um, why is this not installing? Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so that's all being installed. Um, I don't know if anybody else can see that message in the chat, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how you can mute somebody. There must be a way. Block them. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Don't mind me, folks, just reporting spam in my in my chat. Okay. <laughs> Chris is super complicated with the new UI. I searched for this uh, ages last time. Yeah, I, I'm still, I've been sort of on and off streaming for a while and I still don't understand half of these things, but I manage. Um, okay, so now we've got uh, UFW installed. So now we can just run uh, sudo UFW allow SSH. And this is one of the things I love about UFW. I can just allow a specific type of service. So SSH is one, um, HTTP is the other and https is the third if i wanted to allow ftp i would allow that now but i'm not going to um so i can run that to review it but i'm happy with that um let's actually just do that let's go sudo ufw show added uh cool that's all done we're happy with that and now we just run a sudo sudo ufw enable Command may disrupt existing SSH connections. Yes, please go ahead. Let's do it. Firewall is active. Excellent. Uh, and then let's run this command. Um, all good. And then now would be a good idea to check that we cancel SSH in in a different terminal. Um, so let's open up a new one. And we'll just, I'm just going to do it in this tab quickly. So we'll go SSH, Jonathan at psychrotech.coza. Um, and there we go. Okay, so that all still works. We're all good. We've set up our firewall. Happy days. Um, I'm actually going to cancel this. Okay. Uh, now we can close this one down. Then, um, the the guide recommends fail to ban. I, I don't disagree with that recommendation. I'm not going to install that now, but I do recommend going through the steps of installing that. Um, and that's essentially the core sort of server setup. So that's what's also covered in the initial setup guides from DigitalOcean uh, before we actually get into the software we need. So you'll see that took me about half an hour. Um, so yeah, it's usually about half an hour to set up the server, half an hour to set up the software, and then about another half an hour to set up Windows. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna have a sip of coffee first, and then let's dive into installing all the software we need for the server. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is Nginx. Um, Nginx is the server we're installing today, the web server at least. Um, now, the folks at DigitalOcean, they recommend using um, this packages maintained by, and I apologize, I'm going to mispronounce this name, 
but I'm pretty sure it's Andrej Suri. Um, it's basically a, a gentleman uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe, I think, who has these very cool um, packages for Nginx, PHP, and I think MySQL as well. Um, and it basically adds some additional things on top of the default Nginx. So I do recommend using these. He also has packages for Apache. So you can do a similar process if you're doing Apache. Um, but basically you install the repository um, and then you run update and then you can start installing software. Um, so I'm going to let that happen over there. I'm also going to disable Grammarly. Wait, what have I done here? I'm going to disable Grammarly on my, in this browser window, because I don't need Grammarly to keep bothering us. Um, go away, Grammarly. Oh, good grief. Okay, we need to switch it off. For, there we go. Switch it off for there. There we go. Um, side note, I only discovered this much later, but you can actually, um, if you're working with uh, spin up WP's command copy things, you can actually edit it if you want to. Uh, so you could replace, let's say you were working with something like the previous command. Uh, this is a quite a cool little, little feature that I really appreciated when I discovered it. Let's say um, the SSH ones. Let's say you wanted to put in uh, your own stuff in here you can go like that and then copy and paste that i thought that's a pretty cool little little feature uh what is this google thing that's coming up here i don't know what that is uh, just go away google translate uh let's just disable this uh don't display thank you <laughs> um didn't even know that was enabled um so yeah that's just a cool little thing that you can do uh there right Sorry, folks, little little side note. Okay, so we've installed the uh, repository. Now let's run update. Uh, and these things always take a while. So let's do a dist upgrade um, while we wait for all of it. And this has happened to me where I've installed the base server and then when I'm about to install the Nginx and all that, there have been upgrades. It's always a good idea. Pretty much any time you're going to install software on a server, it's a good idea to run an upgrade um, just to be on the safe side and make sure you've got the latest and greatest of everything. Okay, then we could just go ahead and install Nginx. So it's a simple command, um, sudo apt install Nginx minus Y. The minus Y basically just automatically says yes to any questions around do you want to install these things. Um, if you don't put the minus Y in, I'll show you what it, what it does. So it will ask you, do you want to install? Do you want to continue? So all that does is minus Y for that. Uh, so it just makes it one, one less step. Um, and once you've installed Nginx, then you can run Nginx minus V. And there you go. Nginx is installed and running. Now, if we go to our domain, we should see something. So if we go to HTTP colon da 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 Psychotech, sorry, good grief, can I spell? No, I can't. PS, my, yeah, there we go, psychotech.coza. We have an Nginx landing page. Um, so Nginx was successfully installed, happy days. Okay, so let's get back to where we're going. Um, you'll notice it does make a point of saying type in HTTP as, as opposed to HTTPS because we haven't set up an SSL certificate yet. Uh, we'll see if there's time for that today. I didn't have time last week. Um, then there's a conversation around CPU cores and all kinds of other things. I'm not going to worry about that now, but it's a good thing to go through and, and, and break down. Um, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about all of that. Uh, and there's some server changes. There's some client body backs, client max body size stuff. Read through all of this. I'm not going to do this today. I just want to focus on the core, um, the core software and getting WordPress working. Um, then we can install PHP 8.3. So for this one, we need again um, Andrej. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, his, his repository for that. Um, and I do recommend reading through and following all the things that I just skipped over. We just don't have the time to go into it all today. But there are some good tips and tricks and performance improvements that are covered in those previous steps. Okay, so let's run an update again. Um, and then we can go ahead and install all the PHP goodness. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to run PHP 8.3 um, like they're recommending. Um, as some of you might know, WordPress, I think, doesn't fully support PHP 8.3 yet. 
Uh, I think WordPress core does, but there are still plugins and themes that are out of date, but we'll be fine because we're just installing WordPress core today. If you want to install a specific PHP version like 8.2 or 8.1 using underage packages, you can. You can just replace 8.3 with all the 8.2 versions. But I'm going to go ahead and do 8.3 today just because we want latest and greatest. Um, and then we want to configure PHP 8.3 and PHP FPM. So it talks about um, configuring the user and group that the service will run under. Basically, PHP FPM um, is an alternative PHP fast CGI implementation with some additional features that plays really well with Nginx. And it is the recommended process manager to use when installing PHP with Nginx. Um, so let's go and do all the configurations. Um, it's not really much to do. Takes a while to install all the software. <laughs> I'm just going to let all of that go through. Okay, so that's all done. So what I like to do now is I like to make sure that PHP is installed by creating a PHP info file on the server. So I'm pretty sure it's in the var www.html folder. Um, there will be an index.nginxdb, and that's the one we see in the thing. So I'm going to run um, nano index, uh, sorry, I'm going to call it info.php, and I'm going to just pop in a PHP php info and you know for the longest time i thought you had to echo out that command that function but it actually just echoes itself out <laughs> um so we'll write info.php oh permission denied oh i need to sudo uh let's do this again we'll fix that in a second um dirt, dirt, php php info there we go uh, and let's check that that works. Yeah, uh, didn't work. Uh, maybe because I haven't configured it yet. Um, okay, let's go through the steps to get it all configured and working. And then we'll come back here. So let's do this. Um, I thought it would just work, but I guess not. Okay, so now we need to figure for user and group. So there's user w. So what I like to do here is I like to um, control K will cut those lines then control U will paste them essentially. And then I like to paste them again. So what I do is, and then I comment out the originals um, and then I can just update the new ones. And I do this just in case I ever need to roll back if anything goes wrong. So we'll change this to my user. Change that to my user. Notice that this is really a sort of single user environment. So I'm not going to be creating multiple users that need to access all the all the WordPress files. Um, so I'm just going to set it up for this user. And then we need to go for the listen owner. Uh, there we go. And again, I like to do the cut and paste thing just to make sure I don't lose those. I can always come back later and delete them if I really don't want them there. There we go. Um, all right, let's comment these out. There we go. And I think that's all I need to do. I need to adjust the PHP INI to increase the upload size. I'm not going to worry about the upload sizes today. Um, but we can increase the client max body size to, to match the Nginx thing. We can increase the post max size. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to enable the upcatch file override stuff for now. Um, but all of this is recommended. I'm just going to keep it, keep it really, really simple. Um, so then I'm just going to restart PHP FPM. Every time. Here we go. Um, and now it talks about confirming they're running by doing that kind of thing. Um, I should be able to view my PHP file now, if I'm not mistaken. So let's check that out. 
No, still not. Something's gone wrong somewhere. Uh, let's continue along here. Um, oh, I need to I need to create a separate site for it first. Okay, let's do that. Um, so let's just go and rm var www.html info.php. Let's remove that. Uh, I need to do it as the sudo user. Okay, so now we need to create a default uh, Nginx site. So let's do that. Um, okay. So basically what this is doing is this is telling Nginx what the default site is when it requests information um, so that you can create the PHP file to view in the browser. Um, so then we find the section which controls PHP scripts pass PHP files to the CGI server. Uh, here we go, CGI server. Change the section, so location, PHP, we need to just have a look here. Location, PHP, include snippets, all of that. See, this is all commented out, so we probably need to enable that. Um, So, pass scripts to the fast CGI server, location PHP, include snippets, but okay, we need that one, we need that one, we need that one, um, and then we need with PHP and with other sockets. So we can actually comment out this whole section here, there, and then we need to update this to run on PHP 8.3, which is what we have installed. If you installed a different version of PHP, you'd need to update that accordingly. There we go. Okay, so that looks correct. Um, and this is where it's easier for me to do this in Apache because I'm used to Apache, so I know how all this works. Um, but I'm I'm grateful for for tutorials like this one, which help me do it myself. Um, so let's do that. And then let's test that that configuration is correct. This is something I learned recently about testing your configuration files. It's a very handy thing to do because you can check that it's all fine before you try and restart. Um, configuration file test failed. Fast job duplicate. Hmm, 962. See, there's an error there. Uh, so let's go and see if we can fix that. Um, Oh, right. I don't think we needed this. Uh, I don't think we needed this one. That's why. Yeah, I think that does it. The other thing we probably also want to do is add PHP to this list, which I'm guessing it'll talk about later, but I'm going to add it now while we're here. So this just allows uh, Nginx to process PHP files before index.html files. Um, so let's save this. And then let's run the test again. Okay, so that test is successful, all good. Um, so if we copy and restart the server, there we go. Okay, now we can create the info file. Okay, so sudo nano, could have just left it there. <laughs> uh, var. This is also one of the things that I like about Apache versus Nginx. In Apache, it creates a virtual, the first virtual host file for the default site for you. So the default site just works. You can just create the PHP file and, and test it. Nginx, you have to configure it for PHP a little bit first. Um, but I mean, that's just, you know, how servers are somehow different, sometimes different. Okay, so let's do this one again. Uh, PHP, PHP info. Uh, here we go. And there's that. And now we're gonna just have to own it by the user, so sudo ch own. This is because we've set the um, user directive the way we have. So we got info.php. Uh, oh, full path. Silly. Uh, 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 that one. Okay, that's done. Now it should work. So let's see. Let's make this nice and big. And let's see if we have some success. Uh, bad gateway. Great. Um, did 
Did you hit it when things don't work the way you expect them to? Um, I've seen this before. Nginx, PHP, Bad Gateway. Um, yeah, it's if it can't proxy a request to PHP FPM, PHP FPM fails to respond. I think, I think, I think, I think, I didn't restart PHP FPM earlier. I don't think I did that. Let's let's do that. So let's restart PHP FPM and let's restart Nginx. Sometimes that just fixes problems. Just restarting everything. Nope. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. Um check your PHP log. I was hoping we wouldn't hit any issues like this. Um Uh, let's see what we see in the error log. Always good to know where the logs are. Uh, I've got to see that. Permission denied. I wonder if that's because of the user permission thing. Let's see if that if we change that back to that. We start that. <laughs> so this is where you watch me flounder, folks. Um I'm gonna just run through this and just check if there's something I've missed here. Okay, they got into my SQL there. Something PHP. Make data domain. Own it. See, this one talks about setting up your domain. So let's check that let's check that PHP FPM is running. Um no. to ship M. Yeah, PHP FPM definitely looks like it's running. Uh, yeah, there it is. Something in the configuration is not happy. Um, so let's go back a few steps. This might be some of the things that I've skipped over, perhaps. I don't think so. Uh, see if Nginx is still working. Yeah, that's still working. But it's the PHP that's the problem. All right, let's just run through all the settings we made. Just see if there was any of those. Um, So let's have a look here. Okay, version 8.3 is definitely installed. Um, let's run this command and see what this is. Yeah. That's what we expected to. Um, so it's the user and group. Prefix user group. That's fine. And listen owner and listen group. Yeah, that looks all look good. Um, OK. 
Okay, so that's all fine. To increase the file maximum upload size, that doesn't need to be, that doesn't need to be done. Post max doesn't need to be done. Enable up cache file overwriting. That doesn't need to be done. Um, so therefore that doesn't need to be done. Okay, so let's check this. It must be in the, in here. Don't need SSL. Root is via www.html, that's fine. Index, index.php, that's all fine. I wonder if we need to give the server name a name. I think that might be the problem. Let's see. That could be a problem. That's probably fine. Let's have a look at this. So it's location. Bring this side by side. Very, very, very. So it's location. PHP includes snippets. Farcgi.php.conf. Passage I pass Unix run PHP PHP 8.3 FPM sock. That all looks correct. I wonder if this was the problem. Well, let's see. Okay. It's done. There's the info.php. It's owned by the WData user. Okay, so let's change that back to. Let's just see here. I should see if that fixed it. No. Um, okay. No. Oh, that's a little bit annoying. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of just jump ahead and continue with this tutorial because I'm pretty sure there's something that's missing in the configuration and if I set up a special site for it it might actually just work so I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead here um, create a specific site and see if I can get that working so before I do that let's install MySQL um, come back to this in a bit. That's a good point, actually. I didn't enable the site, I, but this was the default site. Hang on, let's just see here. I think, I think we, sites available. Let's have a look at sites enabled. That's actually, that's actually a valid point. Let's have a look at that. Um, so let's see, sites enabled, defaults already enabled. Um, so that means that's what's, that's what's serving everything to the default route. So I don't think it's that. Um, 
but I'm going to I'm going to see later on if if we set up a specific site folder which I think this uh, tutorial does do for us I think then it might we might find it works and it's the default site that's a bit wonky right now so I'm going to come back to this um, okay so let's get on with MySQL um, I'm not going to let this deter me I'm just going to continue on ahead <laughs> okay so there's the MySQL and then we want to alter root at localhost identified by password and I'm just going to literally leave that like that for now. If you guys want to bomb the server, you're welcome to, but I'm going to cancel it in a second anyway. Um, obviously, you want to change the password to something more secure on your side. Um, I'm just going to make it password. And then we can exit out of there. And then we can run the secure installation. And this will ask us to do another password, which just make one up as we go okay so we want the root user so that's password i just moved my mic out the way sorry folks um, then it says uh duh, 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 duh. do you want yes okay mm, too strong Yes, and then let's go with the new password. Oh, Susan, it match. <laughs> it's because I'm trying to type it from memory. Do you want to? Yes, I do. Remove anonymous users. Yes. Disallow root login remotely. I think I need to disable that. Um, should only be allowed from localhost. So yes, I want to disable remote users. And so even if you tried to log into the server remotely, you wouldn't be able to. Let's run the remove the test database. And let's reload all the privileges. Okay, so that's all done. So now we've got all the software installed. We don't quite know if we have PHP working yet, but I feel like it probably is. There's probably just something with the default site. We'll see We'll see when we set up the first WordPress site. Um, but that took about an hour. So it's about an hour, you know, give or take, to kind of get the server up and running. Um, let's, let's jump ahead to our next um, setup. I might not do https i'm not sure i don't know i think it's pretty quick um but it does take a while so i'm going to skip over the https stuff i'm not going to worry about that now uh, you need to set up c names and all kinds of other things i'm not going to worry about that now good steps to go through they use uh, let's encrypt so it's a free ssl search so recommended um and then you set up the the server to run and all of that Okay, so now we need to set up the server block. Oh, we need to set up. Okay, we're going to need to set up the certificates. Um, for this. Okay, so I've already got the DNS set up, so I'm going to go ahead and set up the certificate. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the setup instructions are going to require the certificate. So it's a good thing to do. Um, no, no, sorry, wrong, wrong command. Uh, how do I? No, I want this one. Um, so let's copy this. And then let's add this one. And we'll run update again. Hmm. We can install cert button all of that. Okay. So 
then we can install it. And then <laughs> delete it by mistake. And then while that's installing, I'm going to configure the command here so it works for my for my domain. So it's going to be PSYKROTK. And www dot oh wait smikerotk.co.today I love the fact that you can do that. <laughs> okay, so if we paste that uh, into email address, so I'm going to put in my email address. There we go. And it's going to do things and ask me to confirm things. So yes, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's all fine. So it requests the certificate. Um, I need to make sure where the certificate file are created because we need them for later. Um, so there they are there. So I'm going to copy this out um, and pop it into a note. <coughs> so I do recommend doing this on, on servers. You can either do a free Let's Encrypt certificate or you can um, purchase your own certificate. But if you don't want to purchase one, a free certificate for a, a WordPress site is fine. Okay, so now let's create. So this was the uh, created the catch all. Um, so let's go through and do all of this. Uh, okay. So let's make all the files, the directories we need. So this is basically creating a folder for the logs. I'm going to call it Psychotech because it's easier. And this will be the public directory. Ah, that's not what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted either. This is what I wanted. There we go. And then that there. Okay, so let's create the directories. Okay, so if we Unless we've now got the Psychotech directory, which is great. And then we want to set up the permissions. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to go into sites available and create the virtual host for the site. So it'll be pseudo nano in our case, Psychotech. And then copy and paste the following configuration, ensuring that you change server name, access log, error log, and root. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to pop it in here. <clears throat> okay, so server name is... Protect.coza <clears throat> SSL certificate. Here's this one. Full chain PIM, yeah, that one. Be interesting to compare this to the default catch all and see why it went wrong, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Um, okay, so that's the full chain. This is the private key. <clears throat> the process of this is very similar in Apache if you're doing an Apache system. You just need to Google how it all works. But it's basically setting up the security thing, the, the certificates in the right place and taking it from there. Um, so it's home, Jonathan, Psychotic, KRO. Okay. And this is the public web route. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. This is slightly different, so that might be 
how we fix that. So let's see. So this is now. Today. Oh, this is the same stuff here. Let's just copy that out. I can find the thing now. Okay, so that's good. And we want to return 301 to sacrotech.coza. It's basically just going to handle any request to the www subdomain. There we go. And then this is setting up everything from to port 80, which is basically anything that's insecure. Normally what I would do is I would copy that command out and do like a search replace, but I'm letting you see the the real time. Okay. So that handles everything on port 80. Basically, it points it to the HTTPS version. That handles everything on the HTTPS, but requesting the www subdomain. So that should all be fine. And then this handles all the final configurations. And that points to the root. And that should all be fine. Okay. So now that we've done that, we should be able to save this. Uh, cheers, Chris. <laughs> um, and now we need to tell it to load. So we copy, let's just actually do this here. PSYKRTK to sites enabled and this is another thing i like about apache apache you just go um uh, a to e and sites and the site name and then it just creates the sim link for you but that's fine we'll do it the nginx way so let's paste that okay so we need to check that it's all fine Honestly, the configuration files is probably the most difficult part of all of this. And I still, to this day, don't fully understand what they all do. I just rely on online tutorials. <laughs> um, I'm a developer, not a, not a sysadmin. Okay, so let's restart Apache. Um, so now I want to see what happens if we browse to just the Psychotech domain name. Uh, we probably will get some kind of... Uh, we're getting the... Okay, that's probably because the default one is set up. So what I want to do is um, find that default config file. No, I don't want to do this one. I want to go to sites available. Sites available. Just out of thought, just give me one second. I wonder if this was breaking because I was requesting on the domain name and I hadn't set that up. So let's just go back here. I don't think this is going to work, but I'm just going to revert this back to that. And then I'm going to restart Nginx. database in a second and then I'm going to grab the domain 
this should break. That's what I wanted. Um, that should give me engine X. That's looking me a bad gateway. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that now. But now, if I come to here, this is going to give me an error, which is fine. So now what I want to do, just for my own purposes, I want to go into public, and I want to go HTML. Okay, and then this should give me hello. Right, it's probably not going to give me hello. Oh, wait. Um, this is because the index.php file. Okay, that's fine. Let's just leave it like that for now. Um, I'm just going to continue ahead and hope it all works out. And if we have to, we'll do some troubleshooting um, at some later stage. So for now, let's install a database. Okay, uh, and then let's create database PSM carrot. Okay, um, okay, that's created. Create a new user so that we can identify it. So let's copy this. And this one, I'm going to have to ask you folks not to mess with my user. Um, because, okay, so let's just take this over here. You shouldn't be able to access it until I install the WordPress site, but please don't mess with it when we're doing it. <laughs> um, so let's go create, create user, Psychrotech at localhost, identified by, and let's just go like that. That might work. Um, oh, we've got to get it. We've got to generate to say a secure password. Okay, so let's do that. Um, let's just generate a. Let's just use that. Ah, I have to do it all over again. <sighs> this is always the most difficult part of creating things like this: is creating passwords. Um, okay, let's copy that one. Oh, good grief. And password is not playing with me today. There we go. Okay, let's copy this one out. Just doing this off screen in my notes so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, no, I want this one first. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's do this one. There we go. Your password. Oh. oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, when you've set the password requirements too high. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let's just do a Google search. Um, generate MySQL password that meets strong requirements. And I didn't spell meets correctly there. 
There we go, there's a password generator. I'll just use this one. Let's try that. Okay, that was happy. Um, so that's that one done. And then we want to grant all privileges to that user. So that user can create databases. If anybody's watching this on YouTube later, I'm going to nuke this server anyway, so you can't use that password. Uh, okay, we don't need to worry about the more granular control. Uh, we want to flush the privileges. There we go. And then we can exit MySQL. All right, now we want to install WordPress. Um, I should have installed WPCLI, so let's do that quickly. Because uh, that'll just make installing WordPress easier. So we can just copy this one. Okay. And then we can move it to somewhere we need it. So this is handy for WordPress specific stuff to install sites and all that kind of thing. There we go. Paste that. Okay, so if we just go WP info. Yeah, no WordPress installation found. That's fine. Um, that's dash dash info, I think. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Elaine, what are you doing around here? <laughs> uh, um, I forgot that I needed that. So if anybody's interested to know, the gentleman who just uh, commented in the chat is the maintainer of WPCLI. Um, I thought I could skip over installing it, but I'm going to need it for my installation. So welcome. <laughs> um, okay, now let's get on to setting up WordPress. Um, and I still need to figure out this Nginx issue, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, we've done all of that, we've done all of that. Database we've done. Uh, okay, let's install some WordPress. So we can go CD, uh, Cycrotech public directory. Um, we can remove the index.html file. And we can go WP core download. Um, and there it's downloading. Um, and then we can create the config file. So I'm going to just do this in line here for now. Um, Codex DB name, PSYKROTK, DB user, PSYKROTK, DB pass, password. Honestly, if you are managing WordPress sites on a, on a server, WPCLI is the best way to do it. Um, I have WPCLI installed for my local environments. Um, highly recommend it. So there we go, config file generated. Now we can run all of this, so let's go. This why I care about UK. Let's see what today. Um, okay. I'm just going to go J Bossinger. And my email will be Jonathan at This why I care about UK. Let's see what today. And for admin password, I'm just going to put in a password for now. If you guys want to log into the site and break it, you're more than welcome to. I'll kill it after the um, after the uh, live stream. But I'm going to go password one. Highly secure. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. So that's all done. So now let's see what happens if we go over here. Uh, okay, I'm still getting issues with this. I wonder what is going on here. Uh, this is annoying me. <sighs> something in the Nginx configuration or something is causing this problem. I don't know what it is. Um... See what happens if I go and look for the README, for example. Let's 
going to be really annoying if I can't get this to work before we finish up here. Um, okay. Just do an empty cache and hard reload. No, it doesn't like that. Um, I'm going to try the dumbest of solutions and just try and restart the server and see what happens. Um, okay. Now I can't connect to the damn thing. <laughs> oh dear, did I break it? It looks like it's running. Okay, it's up and running again. Let's see what happens here. Hmm, still 404 ing. Now, why is that? Okay. Let's see what I can figure out here. Permission denied. Permission denied. It's got to do with use of permissions. Something to do with user permissions. Um, but I set those up when we configured Nginx. Oh, wait. Wonder if this is the problem. What if there's something that I missed? Yeah, that... Uh, so when I skipped over the worker processes and all of that, there was also a thing about setting the user to the username. That's what I missed. Uh, sometimes sometimes you can't skip over steps. <laughs> but I didn't really want to go into the all the issue of doing all of that. So let's fix that. That'll probably fix the other issue as well. This was the problem, bet you. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to chat about this in a second when we when we wrap up. Um, just want to comment this out. The rest of what I leave as is. Okay. So that's that done, and then we probably just need to restart Nginx. Don't need the client max body stuff. Let's just check this. That's all fine. Let's restart this. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Yay! It did work. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about this for a second. One of the things that um, the spin up WP guide tells you to do in this example um, is to change the Nginx user to the user that you created. Now, that's fine if you're going to create the server to host one WordPress site. Let's actually, we should be able to see our WordPress site now. Um, 
there's the readme for example um, and there's the the wordpress site um, it works um let's log in what did we said was jonathan and what was it what did i make it can anybody remember <laughs> um password one oh oh no it was j messenger password one uh maybe not maybe i changed it to something else oh no, there we go logging in um so you're welcome to log in um i'm going to nuke the server after this live stream as soon as this finishes but feel free to log in and play around if you'd like leave me a leave me a home page um so this is interesting so as i was saying this guy tells you to set up the nginx user as the jonathan user or in our case the user we created so basically that user is managing the whole server is managing the site running on that server um and you need to make sure that that user is set everywhere if you're going to be running some kind of like shared hosting environment, you kind of need to have like a top level admin user. And then I think you can add a per site level. You can create different users, different user folders, uh, and then you can do things like FTP access and all that kind of thing. Um, but this is a this is like the, the safer way of just having like one user that manages the whole of Nginx. Um, so that was in case you missed that, that was in the uh, in the Nginx config file. So the etc Nginx Nginx config just changing that user um to the to the current user and then later on we change the ownership of that psychotech folder to that user and that's why it all magically works okay we have 20 minutes left let's see if we can get this thing to um uh, wordpress multi-site because that was kind of what we did talk about um uh in the original meetup i think i said um I oh, know I didn't talk about multi-site, <clears throat> um, but it's something that I was asked about, like setting up multi-sites on Nginx. So let's see if we, in 20 minutes whether we can do that quickly. Um, so WordPress multi-site. Um, let's see if we can enable that quickly on Nginx. Uh, create the network. Uh, we need to allow multi-site to be true. So let's go in there let's go cd Sacrotech public wp config no oh wait changing directory not nanoing sorry uh hit the right button for crying out loud <laughs> um I'll just pop this in here. Okay, and now we should be able to refresh the dashboard. I think it's in tools. We can go network setup. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go with subdomains. I've got a wildcard wild card subdomain set up on my DNS already. So that's fine. Uh, let's go install. Okay, and it says now, the other thing to note is compared to um, Apache, there's some further configuration you need to do for Nginx. Um, so I'm gonna first make these changes here to the WP config. Okay, so that's all there. And then let's go and have a look at the further configuration. And this is where, if you because you're running Nginx, you need to be able to set certain things in the config. Um, but I got a feeling that the spin up WP config actually allows it to just work. So let's let's see. Let's see if it works without anything to do anything. Um, and let's see what happens. Okay. So let's go. Okay, and it was passed password one okay we're in don't need that it looks like we don't have sites yet hmm existing network is good there. um oh wait no 
Let's do this again. Just. Oh, I haven't saved this, that's why. Silly boy. Let's do that again. Okay, let's log in. Uh, what is it? Jonathan versus word one. Was it? No, it was, what is it? I can't remember. Mm. J. Bossinger. That's what it was. One password is freaking out. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Yay! We have sites. We have network admin. We can create sites. Let's see if this all works. Um, so let's add a new site. Let's call it Bob. Bob's site. We go Bob at cyclotech.ca.za. We add a site there. Let's see if that works. Let's see if we can visit the dashboard for that site. Yeah, that's fine. That's because I think the SSL certificate is not set up correctly. Um, but I think that can be fixed. I'm not going to do it now, but I'm pretty sure it can be fixed. But there's the site. And we can view the site. Yay, the site works. And so this is another reason why I recommend following the SpinUp WP guide, because the Nginx configuration that they have, um, that they described in the per WordPress site block. So where is it? This whole thing here um, is set up so that it supports multi-sites as well. So if you want to do a multi-site installation, you can do that. Um, and you're good to go. I'm going to turn off the server now so that you people can't log in if you want to. <laughs> um, but essentially, essentially that's how, how it all works. Um, I went through that all very quickly, but you're looking at about, once you're comfortable with the settings, once you go through the process, you're looking at about two to three hours max. Um, as, I, as we discovered, there were some steps that I, that I sort of skipped over uh, that required me to do some things, specifically changing the username. Uh, or at least the name that you know the, the server is running under. All of those steps that I skipped over, I do recommend going through them and setting them up because the folks of Spin Up WP have done a great job of sort of you know finding the best connections and the best setups. Um, so I do recommend going through that whole process. Would have taken us longer if we did that, but there you go. Um, but there's our network working. There's our site working. You can't access it now because I've just disabled the server. Let's just verify that. Um, yeah, it's all dead. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's our that's our fairly. I mean, I say fairly straightforward. I'm fairly comfortable on the terminal. I have set up these things in the past, uh, but it is definitely possible to create a WordPress site on a VPS. Um, you're looking at on DigitalOcean. I think this VPS is something like six dollars a month. Um, so six dollars a month and around about two to three hours of setup and configuration, and you've got a working WordPress site. Um, so if you're looking for something to manage yourself. Uh, I, I recommend checking it out. Even I even suggest to developers that even if they don't ever plan on using this stuff, um, it's a good idea to go through the process, um, understand how it works, understand what the different commands do, so that you know what it's doing. Read up about you know what am I changing, what am I what am I doing. Um, let me switch the server back on so we can see it, um, because it's a good thing to know how these things work. Um, I've broken it completely now. You watch. <laughs> Uh, does this work? No, that's dead as well. It's probably going to take a while before it comes up again. Um, let me see if I can log in here. Do, 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 do. Let's log back in. I wonder why it, it's interesting. It takes so much longer to restart once you've got all the software installed on it. I do find that interesting. Um, but this should all be working again now. Um, yep, there we go. It's all still running. So that's the other nice thing is you can turn it on and off if you want to. Um, you know, you can do pretty much whatever you want. All right, folks. Um, so that certainly wasn't a step-by-step -step guide. Um, it was just, you know, the process of doing it. Um, there is going to be a third uh, edition of this live stream. And so far, each live stream has had some kind of issue that I've had to figure out. So hopefully the third one doesn't. But essentially, this all comes from a question that I had about somebody asking me to set up a VPS with multi-site support using Open Lightspeed. So that will be the next uh, live stream around this topic. We'll see if we can get Open Lightspeed set up. Um, and then maybe I'll try and document all the links and the steps and the whatever else. But anyway, um, my recommendations, as I say, check out the DigitalOcean initial server setup with Ubuntu. 
check out the how to install the software on DigitalOcean. Also go through the Spin Up WP guide, um, two, three great resources that I highly recommend you check out. Um, and play with it yourself. Try and find some kind of uh, virtual local server if you can, um, something like Drop, uh, not Dropbox, uh, virtual box or something like that. And then you can play with these things yourself and you can kind of understand how all these things work. I, I highly recommend that developers understand how the web server that they work on works. Um, it's a really good thing to do because you just understand how things work better. Um, and you just have more knowledge about, you know, your space and what you're doing. Okay, um, that's going to be my bit, folks. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you all for your comments and your and your and your chatting. Um, thank you for my guests who suddenly joined me out of nowhere that uh, that I didn't know were joining. Um, but I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday and rest of your week. And I will see you again in around about a month when we dive into Open Lightspeed um, and try to get that set up. Okay, bye. <laughs>